Hello, everyone. Welcome to Oddly Perfect Math. This is a story about odd perfect numbers. Ancient philosophers sought perfection in all things. A perfect tree. Perfect beauty. Perfect justice. They found a number with special properties and called it perfect, a title readily accepted in their day. Take the number six. Six is one times six and two times three. These factors are called divisors. Add all divisors of six, one plus six plus two plus three equals 12. Since the sum of divisors of six is 12 or twice six, then six is perfect. Using a worldwide distributed computer system called GIMPs, the great internet Mersenne Prime Search, Users extended the number of known perfect numbers to 51. All of these perfect numbers are even. But what about odd perfect numbers? Take the sum of divisors of a number, like 6, and call this the sum, the function named by the lowercase Greek letter sigma. Then sigma of 6 is 2 times 6. Sigma of 6 divided by 6 is 2. For an odd perfect number n, Sigma of n divided by n is 2. <clears throat> the rules that define an odd perfect number, n, are well known, but never before expressed together so plainly and simply. Rule 1, n is odd. Rule 2, n is perfect. Rule 3, n is a natural number. Rule 3, states that n is a natural number, a positive integer. Italian mathematician Giuseppe Piano defined natural numbers with his axioms. He defined and proved that the ordin ordinary rules of arithmetic apply to natural numbers. Because n is a natural number, according to our rule 3, all the rules of arithmetic for natural numbers apply to odd perfect numbers such as addition and multiplication. Rule 1 states that n is odd, and its divisors are odd primes. The fundamental theorem of arithmetic states there is only one prime factorization for an integer. Each prime factor is unique, with a count of each prime listed as its exponent. n is prime 1 to the power of e1 times prime 2 to the power e2 for all of n's prime factors. n is expressed as the product of odd prime factors one way. Rule 2 is an equation. The sum of divisors of an odd perfect number, sigma of n, divided by an odd perfect number n, equals 2. Sum of divisors of an odd perfect number, sigma n, contains two exactly once. Why? Suppose the sum of divisors of n, sigma n, has a divisor of two two times. Then sigma of n over n equals two times two times some odd number, divided by n, which is the same odd number. The odd numbers cancel leaving a quotient of 4. Sigma of n equals 4 times the odd prime powers in n. And n is not perfect. Place 2 in the denominator to cancel the surplus 2 in the numerator. The 2's cancel, leaving the quotient 2. Then n is a perfect number, but n is in the denominator where 2 is a factor. That means n is an even perfect number, not odd. Now place a single 2 in the numerator as a factor of the sum of divisors of n. The odd number in the denominator cancels the odd primes in the numerator, leaving a quotient of 2. And n in the denominator is odd. Therefore, 2 divides sigma n exactly once. How do we compute the sum of divisors of n? 
There is a nifty trick. The sum of divisors function is multiplicative. What's that? Well, the p's are prime and sigma function is multiplicative. So we write so we rewrite the function this way. Now we can compute sigma of n with one prime at a time and multiply the results together. We need a special prime to an odd power to make a fraction with 2 in the numerator. The special prime, q, is the only prime with an odd exponent in n. Then 2 is a factor of the sum of divisors of q to the alpha. When q is congruent to alpha is congruent to 1 mod 4. Then sigma of q to the first power is 2 times an odd number, leaving a single 2 in the numerator to make a quotient of 2. Perfect! That modulus means that prime q is a multiple of 4 plus 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. 4 times 3 is 12 plus 1 is 13. Both 5 and 13 may be the special prime. Finding the sum of divisors of a prime power is easy. 19 squared divides 19 squared, and so does 19, and so does 1. 19 squared plus 19 plus 1 equals 3 times 127. Rules for an odd perfect number, n, are these. Rule 1. n is the product of odd prime powers. Rule 2. n is the sum of divisors of n divided by n. n has one special prime to make the quotient 2. Rule 3 follows the rules for ordinary arithmetic. And n is. That means n exists. The number of numbers is infinite. If n is an odd perfect number, there must be a number larger than n and less than infinity. Let this number be called m. Oakham and Rao proved that no odd perfect number exists below the value of m equals 10 to the 1500. That is 1 followed by 1,500 zeros. It has not been proven that n exists or not. If n exists, there is a number larger than n. Call it m. I started my proof of m equals 10 to the 400 before Oakham and Rao's work and finished my proof long after they finished theirs. My proof verifies my improved arrangement of proof, as well as several examples of my new findings. An important characteristic of an odd perfect number is its size. Pick a bound m and find an odd perfect number less than m. If not found, and if one exists, an odd perfect number must be larger than m. For my proof, carried out by me and a desktop computer, the bound is m equals 10 to the 400. The proof of the main theorem is in two parts, theorem A and theorem B. Theorem A. Suppose a small prime divides an odd perfect number. Then that number is greater than 10 to the 400. Theorem B. Suppose no small prime divides an odd perfect number then that number is greater than 10 to the 400. The proof of theorem A is huge and has 30,000 lines of proof. Theorem B is filled with math technology and is proved with two spreadsheets. The small primes are contained in set S, listed in the order they are used in theorem A. Will we 
Will we discuss them? Uh, no. The proof of the main theorem follows immediately from theorem A and theorem B. The main theorem. There is no odd perfect number less than 10 to the 400. Studying odd perfect numbers is not to find one. One probably does not exist. The purpose is to learn mathematics in an oddly perfect way. The proofs of theorem A and theorem B is an amazing journey full of mathematical twists and turns. Enjoy the journey learning oddly perfect math. Thanks for watching.